It's Wednesday, December 5th, 2012. This is the 404 Show on CNET. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. <laughs> I guess I'm Ariel Nunez, and this is the show where we engineer great thoughts. <laughs> it's funny because Peter had ducked, he ducked behind the microphone. <laughs> As if we had have no idea that he was here the whole time. <laughs> What's up, Peter? Ha! Huh? Thanks for coming back, dude. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been What's a pleasure uh, following your career over the last couple of months. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Well, first I wanted to talk to you. Um, you know, the first time we, I think we had you on. This was probably before the daily. We 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 befriended you, and we were having you on as a regular guy. Yeah, I think that's when I was at time yeah right yeah, yeah. we were at Techland, and yeah. then uh and then you went to the daily so quickly yeah. what do you what, what do you make of all this recent news that came out this week it's no let's get serious it sucks right uh it sucks and here's the thing um all the hacking stuff that happened in the uk mm-hmm. is really like the reason why really the company had to restructure and why the daily is shutting down wow that's the first because, time i've heard that well if you think about it, everything that's in the new th- like, I think the company's called PubCo, right? It's all their publishing properties. So right. the Journal, The Post, uh, I think HarperCollins, or whichever book publishing they have. The Post loses millions of dollars a year. Yet it survives. You can't, well, yeah, because it's been around long enough, and right. it's, um, it's somewhat influential. Yeah. So you can't have two properties in a brand new company losing, like, upwards of 60, 50 to 60, 70 million dollars a year. You just can't do it. And they don't have Fox News anymore to leverage that. Yeah. Or rather, pad the, uh, pad the numbers. That's interesting. So, in ter- but in terms of what The Daily stood for, yeah, I think that transcends the actual s- scenario. You know what I mean? So, I, what do you think about that? Where do, you, where do you think anyone will now try and do something like that again? Probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, on an, on an exclusive you, like, tablet basis. Something the like Daily that. was... More or less a failure from launch. I thought it, well, maybe the app. I mean, my whole thing with the daily was that I thought it was cool that you had it, but I wish there was a way for me to read select articles that you enjoyed. For mm-hmm. You know, there's really no way for you to share so, articles from someone that has a, a subscription. So here's the thing. You could share it. It was just, like, completely buried, and we never did a really good job of, hmm. like, educating the users. The other yeah. problem is it should have... It's it's run like a newspaper, obviously, mm-hmm. but it should have been run like a newspaper newspaper from like way 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 <laughs> back in the day, ago. right? When you would have two editions, right? Right, like so two day. early morning edition, right. late afternoon late, late edition, edition mm-hmm. yeah. Because honestly, and there are a lot of people with iPads, a lot of old folks who are used to reading newspapers, so yeah. they want to consume it in that way. They're not on the web like we are, just looking at every single thing that pops up. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely an audience out there. It's just you know, it was sort of they didn't really market it right. Didn't really advertise it properly. Uh, the content was always old. The app was very slow. And that's uh, I think else. that had a lot to do with it in the yeah. beginning, at I mean, least, in its yeah. infancy. The app was was laggy. It was it was slow. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of a lot of things, but ultimately, so there's two reasons why. Oh, well, I mean, there's really only one reason why it it, it closed. It was right. because the company had to restructure. And that's right. Basically, it. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that it. It was a casualty of that. Yeah. It, it, like I said, and I can say this because I was there from the very, very beginning. For sure. Like, it was mm-hmm. a failure from the beginning. Well, you were up against uh, incredible odds. I mean, going up against yeah. the internet, right? I mean, that's yeah. essentially <laughs> who your competitor was, right. was the internet. That's crazy. To, to try and operate in today, in today's sort of, like, market mm-hmm. outside of the internet, like, that's just... It was tough to charge for you it, too. You can't do that. Yeah. And, and, P- and chat rooms saying it, it, the fact that it, it cost money was, yeah. was, was a big deal. So I, I was a big proponent of the fact that it was 40 bucks for the year. I thought that was really good. So here's the thing. If you think about it, outside of the old news, you get crossword Sudoku, your horoscope, your weather, mm-hmm. and then you get that, mm. uh, uh, that sports page where you can right. sort of like track right. your teams and all these things. Yeah. That in and of itself, I think, is – it's – Kind of nice for a buck a week, forty dollars a year. Of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, they should have just marketed it that way. Like, here's crossword, Sudoku, blah blah blah, every yeah. single day, for a dollar a week, forty dollars a year, plus some news. Did you kind of get the feeling that once they axed the sports page, that it was kind of going downhill? Was that the impetus for you to start looking for new jobs? No, nah, honestly, for me, the only reason I left was I just it wasn't really being challenged. Mm-hmm. Uh, my section was pretty small. We only had to put out like two to four stories a day. Yeah. And you did technology and apps? Yeah, so I 
We covered games too, right? Yeah, we did. Because it was Chris was there, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we did, you know, just consumer tech mm-hmm. apps for iPhone and Android, at, you know, down the road there, and then video games. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, dude, like, we all live on the internet. We're all, like, basically sure. internet personalities. For sure. And I was essentially off the grid for, like, 18 months while yeah, I was there. That's right. No one knew so, where you were. Yeah. Looking under I was cars just being and snarky stones. on Twitter and those. Yeah. Like, that was, that was your. That seemed like that was your only job for a while. <laughs> All right, so you left the daily. That was yeah. a while ago. You left the daily, and you went over. You were doing your own thing for a little bit, then you went to TechCrunch. Uh, so I left the daily in April. Went back to TechCrunch, uh, late April. Yeah. And uh, I left uh, a couple months ago. So what happened? Just you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So now you're at Gizmodo. You know, honestly, TechCrunch is just a trade pub for the Valley. Yeah, <laughs> and outside of Silicon Valley, no one really cares about it. Okay, I just see. I don't. I don't have serves, this sort of. It just insight. serves a very specific purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's for investors, entrepreneurs, and things right, like that. Right. For sure, you're totally right. It's tough because it does we're, get linked out a lot, though. Yeah, sure. I mean, we read it a lot because we're in the industry, but I yeah. guess it doesn't really matter if you're not looking for the next big startup, right? And that's basically it. Um, and it serves a very specific purpose. I just mm-hmm. wasn't that interested in, in doing that anymore. And, uh, yeah, I joined the guys at Gizmodo about three weeks ago. Four, yeah, like three weeks ago. Four right weeks on. Ago. So what are you doing there now? Uh, I am now the news editor there. Sweet. Mm. And what job yeah. are you going to have next week? I was going to say, yeah, where, where <laughs> let us know where you're going to next week. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> I am not going anywhere for a couple months. Uh, for a couple months. For a couple months. That's mm-hmm. a solid game plan. Yeah. For you, that's the most stability you've had in a while. <laughs> um, but Since will, the daily, yeah. How does it feel to get back into the editorial side of things? Because yeah. it seems like you've been on a managing editor at different places. Now you're actually writing articles. I wrote. I read one yeah. that you wrote about the daily. Yeah. I, you know, Gizmodo is a much different place than it used to be, let's say, like mm-hmm. three or four or five years ago when I first started at TechCrunch and we were trying to compete with those guys in Engadget. It's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we don't do as much of the filler content, you know, the popcorn stuff, just any little BS thing that pops up. It's yeah. just, uh, it's good. So the direction it's going in right now is I, I'm all for it, and it's only going to get better in the next couple of months, and um, I'm pretty excited. And you will be at CES? Uh, huddled on her desk somewhere, yes. Mm. I'll be at really? CES. So we're not going to see you at all? You'll, you'll nah, just... I'll be around. Yeah? yeah You're yeah. going to be hitting the pavement a little bit? Yeah. When was the last time you were at CES? Were you there last year or you weren't there last year? Uh, I don't think I've gone in the last two years it's uh man or no wait when did i go i don't remember see i don't i don't think i ever remember seeing i skipped there. one year yeah. i didn't go this year maybe we could work something out with you would you yeah. want would you want to come, come on, on then sure see that stage you know oh, yeah when big old stage the big old stage <laughs> i can't tell if you're being Heck sarcastic yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's a big yeah. ass stage uh, it is huge yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ariel, you get a read on this guy? Yeah, it's kind of yeah, tough. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, like, I will be super excited to be on the 404. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we'll be really excited to have you. Yeah, we just, that sounds great. Can we just bash things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. Like, this that. is stupid. Yeah. Can't believe oh, I thought this. you meant like physically hit things. We oh, can, do that can we too. do that too? Yeah, definitely. Go we little... Gallagher? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is computers. he in Vegas? He might be. Probably, right? Just take a mallet to a 4K TV or something like that? Because that's, so, I mean, you know, now that you're entrenched in, in, the gulch that is uh, yeah. consumer electronics again. Mm-hmm. What is there anything you're sort of uh, excited about for CES? Are, uh, you, are you looking forward to seeing anything? I I feel like e- like last year, you know, 3D was sort sort of yeah. hanging around still. Uh, it was it was 3D, 3D printers. Printing, yeah, yeah. It was a big one. This last year, year is pretty much going to be the year of the 4K TV. Is We're going to go back what, to is TVs what, is again. What I'm, is what I'm gathering. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like quad core phones. Uh, man, I, really mean, just, no, I mean, no. I mean, those off. things I just don't, I don't care about. But it's, right. So it's what, weird that CES has become a thing, or a show rather, that focuses so much on TVs. The last oh, couple dude, years. That's so boring. The, that's the number one thing. It's it re- so right? Is it boring. not? I agree. It really. I agree. I I find that that category. It's just been a trend for so yeah. long, and I'm sort of over it. Actually, the things I'm looking forward to, and you guys know this. When you maybe some of you don't, but when you sign up for CES as a as a journalist, you have to like pick and choose the segments of consumer technology that you cover actually so i didn't know that if you're <laughs> I like didn't know that because we always get pre-registered by oh really yeah no but oh. okay, that's yeah you have to pick like if you're into car stuff or if huh. you're into audio stuff video games huh. accessories sort of all these we're things so, we're, so, we're in our own bubble man yeah. so we're in a bubble dude. well no you guys are lucky yeah you don't, don't do, you, do you have to hit the floor 
Yeah. yeah in some yeah. capacity, mm-hmm. but not in, in the same way that maybe yeah. other people do. But, but so, go on. I want, this so is the all things, very new and exciting. The things that I'm looking forward to are all the wearable health tech stuff. Hmm. Like, I'm really getting into that the last So you're months. into the Fitbits and you're into the Jawbone Ups and stuff like that? The Jawbone Up, the Feel Band, the Fitbit, Did you, did you write a review on the Up? Uh, it's going up today, actually. Are you wearing one right now? I'm wearing an Up and a Feel Band and a Fitbit. Where? And which one tells you to go to the <laughs> oh, bathroom? Oh, there's... Look at this. <laughs> wow. And How the do you... Fitbit's on my pocket. And then there, I have another one called the Strive Play, Jeez. which is another pedometer, but I don't really like it as much. So, okay, I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah. Why the hell would anyone want to wear one of these bracelets around all day? I mean, what is it? Are, your review's going up yeah. today, so can you, by the time this hits, you know, it'll probably Look, be Look, if this version of the Up had launched last year, I would have given it a really, really, like, solid rating. So, mm-hmm. but now, the simple fact that it's the same thing, basically, as last year's model. So this is the second Up? Correct. I didn't know that. Did you yeah. know that? This Are, is, okay, so tell us what yeah. the, uh, the Up is. It's like so a the Up tracker. is an activity monitor mm-hmm. that not only tracks your sort of movement throughout the day and night, it tracks your sleep and analyzes all that sort of stuff and says, oh, you woke up X amount of times last night, you were in deep sleep for three hours of the seven hours that you were sleeping or whatever it is. Right. Uh, and you can log, you know, what you eat and, and that sort of stuff. But the problem with it is uh, well, well, unless you have an iOS device, right. you can't use it. And there's right. no desktop portal for it. Well, that's trash. Yeah, yeah. and... Honestly, Jawbone is up known, obviously, for all their Bluetooth stuff. Right. The Jawbone up doesn't have a Bluetooth chip. Really? So you can't sync so, so the how data wirelessly. So you have to physically plug it into your Shut phone. Shut up. Wow. What the hell is that? I don't understand that. See this little thing? You got to pull this cap off. Mm-hmm. What? And then plug it into the jack. Huh. And that's how it communicates. Yeah. That's a dumb, that's dumb. It's jacked up. That's jacked up. So are they, they'll probably be at CES with a new up, with the up three. No. No? This is it. This is it. This is well, it. Hardware aside, I mean, you've been using it for testing on this review for a little while. Yeah. Have you noticed a lifestyle change? Do you feel healthier? Like, you've been monitoring your sleep and diet? Um, you know, the one nice thing about the Up is that it has this, like, idle alarm. So uh-huh. you can set it for, uh, I don't want to be sitting for more than, I guess, 45 minutes. So it starts <laughs> to buzz me. It vibrates a little bit. <laughs> wow, okay. And then it notif- notifies me that I've been lazy. And, that and then you just get around. up and walk around. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I mean, it's in theory, it's it's pretty cool, but execution-wise, it's not that great. But yeah. there's also some other stuff coming down the road that actually measures your heart rate with galvanic sensors, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is actually much more accurate. All right, measures your sweat and all this stuff. I think that's, I mean, people, that sort of stuff I thought was going to take off really, really quickly when Fitbit sort of made a splash. Yeah. And uh, it never really gained a lot of momentum, right? It's sort I mean, of the Fitbit is super popular, and the Feel Band's been really popular as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only problem is with the Jawbone. It's just, you know, like I said, if it had launched, if this version had launched last year, yeah, it would have been pretty rad. But it sort of seems behind the times. It, yeah, it's behind the times because they had to fix everything that basically didn't work in the first one, and it looks exactly the same. It yeah. looks just like the old one. All right. So be honest. Is this whole trend a gimmick? Is it really saving people? You know, uh, uh, in terms of their health, are they really benefiting from this stuff, or is it just like the Wii Fit, where it's just well, I was sort just going to bring up like the Wii and the Kinect and, yeah. and mm-hmm. PlayStation Move and all that stuff. I don't think it's saving anyone's life, but right. it's certainly getting is it people improving? to be more active. Yeah, you think um, so? No, for me, it's pretty motivating. Like the Feel Band, for instance, has an instant display that shows me my progress mm. and whether or not I'm even closely hitting my goal. So you're turning you're turning your your well being into a game. Essentially, yeah, that's the whole point of it. That's right. It's a lot of things operate on that sort of platform. Like Foursquare is basically a travel game. Right. I mean, the gamification of it is, I didn't think it worked anywhere until I started using the Fuel Band, because it's sort of instant gratification, right? Like mm-hmm. you instantly see on this band like how far you are. Well, it's probably not showing, but see how it's red there? Yeah, when it's green that's, down that's there. That's kind of cool, I have, a far, man. I have a long way to go today to hit my goal. Wait, you, when what, you uh, say goal, you mean yeah. like burning calories for the day by exercising no, you, or just walking around? So with the field band, you have to pick a specific fuel score that you want to hit for the day. Uh-huh. So it's either 2,000, 3,000. That's based on some weird Nike proprietary algorithm that nobody understands. And, w- and what really do you do sense. to achieve that? How do you get that meter going up? Walk, run, work out. Yeah. Uh... 
just basically be active. So how can it tell if it's on your wrist? How can it tell if you're doing like a spin class? I thought the fuel band had so something integrated problem. into your sneakers so that when you walk, it registers like a pedometer. It gets no, implanted that's into for your the head. that's for the like Nike, Nike Plus. Plus. Okay. So the fuel band works independently from that, but you can combine the two together, like on the on the desktop, to like get a whatever mm -hmm. fuel score you can get. But, Interesting. Um, the problem with a lot of these activity monitors right now is that they're based on bipedal motion, so basically walking, anything mm -hmm. to do with like your two legs moving. Right. Uh, but the problem is, let's say you're super hardcore into yoga right um kind of a stationary sport yeah but i mean you're still burning a lot of calories and like working your ass mm -hmm. off but unless you're moving your fuel score will never go up mm. like right. even with the fitbit or the jawbone up right it doesn't register that which is the biggest problem so yeah. is there is a, i'm still trying to understand how yeah. it works uh from the hardware perspective yeah. is it an accelerometer inside that registers when you move your yeah, arms so their accelerometer is you put in your sex your weight your height and uh -huh. it figures out what your stride length is huh. so based on movement it figures out whether or not you're walking running and doing this and that interesting yeah do you find yourself like moving more <laughs> intentionally while you're walking? Exaggerating. Yeah. I try and do that sometimes just to see if I can like trick it, yeah. game the system, right. but game the game. It's it. I think it's smart enough that yeah. it understands basic movement mm. and knows that when you're doing when you're doing windmills, crazy down the motion, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you're you might not be doing anything because you right. don't really sustain that for very long. Right. So if I would imagine it would discover that Justin does a weird activity That's how I will. four times yeah. a day yeah. with that, yeah. with that <laughs> No, no, no. Use the other one. <laughs> Use the other hand. You gotta do the stranger. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, can you put and, it anywhere? And they're, and they're not fighting being on the same wrist? Those two things are okay? They're, they're no, getting they get along. along. They get along. Yeah. Right. Very yeah, good. Yeah, so like wearable health tech and cool, then cool. like emerging technology like robotics and stuff. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm going to look for at yeah. CES. I always look for the thing at CES that I've never seen before. Because <clears throat> a lot of it is just people improving on things that already exist, right. which yeah. is fine. It's the way the world works. But I like to see stuff that I've never, ever seen before. And the last couple of CESs, I haven't seen anything like that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, aside if you just wander over the AVN show. And that's not, gonna but be that's the not case even going to be the case. It's not even going on this year. So what mm. the hell were you in Vegas for? Last year I saw something. The MakerBot had a, a 3D printer set up next to a Kinect. And uh, uh, it uses the camera to scan your bust, so from your shoulders up. And then it would create a miniature yeah. version of that, which was really cool. That's something that I had never seen before. Do you guys really technology. like the 3D printing stuff? The I, Maker I like the stuff. idea more I than like, the practical application. I like 3D printing 10 years from now. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because like right now it's it's whack. Dude, I went to the MakerBot store. Stupid. You know how it's over yeah. on uh, yeah. off house in there, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah, and so they're obviously all those machines are basically printing bracelets right. that they want you to pay ten dollars for. Yeah. So I went in with a friend a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, oh yeah, you guys can take a bracelet. Mm -hmm. So we took one. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It Close, you didn't say. Okay, you're right. It broke. <laughs> yeah. it broke. She was like taking it off her wrist. Yeah, yeah. And then it like snapped. Well, because mm -hmm. it's made of really cheap, layered, stringy plastic. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, the thing is, what though, am I gonna do with this thing? Why would anyone right. pay like twenty thousand or whatever it is for that machine? Mm -hmm. Well, there are some 3D crazy printers out there. there, and you're also only limited by the design that you choose right. to print out. I, right. I think sure. the MakerBot store would be a lot better if you could bring your own design in. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, you can't wait five hours for something to print. Sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some stuff that they make that's pretty solid, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it's like, do I need a new doorstop? Who's yeah. Who's gonna buy this thing? You're right, right but people are Ooh. buying it. People are. But there's it's not. A, it's not a... for people like you and me. It's, right. it's for tinkerers. It's sure. for. It's been around it's for a year. Stuff. Yeah. No, I so get it. I understand that. Once more colors, you're allowed. Yeah. Once you're allowed more colors to print out sure. and, and better designs come out, and you're, you're also limited by that five by five square that you're printing on right. too. So it has to be small. And there right. is a community that is growing. Yeah. Where people share and exchange. But do you think they're mostly plans. hobbyists? Sure. Yeah. Or are they actually like? They're just I mean, early, they're obviously physically doing stuff, but prototyping something that's yeah. actually going to come to market. Mm -hmm. They're early adopters who who see value have in, a, lot of in money. a really early technology yeah. Yeah. and have a and have a crap load of money to just sort of throw at something, I guess. I'm going to go buy a, a 3D printer today. <laughs> see, I don't know what I'm going to do with and it. That's it's crazy. I'm going to make tiny little hearts with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, give what am I going to do? I'm going to recreate a whole chess set. I don't, yeah. right? like, what, I don't you know. You could probably do that, could, but still. But that's it. You could go buy one for 20 bucks at Kmart. Right, exactly. Uh, it's it's really about printing multiple parts to create something bigger. Like the other day, we saw a video of a new toy robot that transforms yeah. into from mecha into vehicle, and that was entirely printed using a three D printer. So I think like if you 
if you print a bunch of parts that can make up something yeah. cooler, then you might have something there. But yeah, sure. if you're printing knobs to your mm -hmm. old Buick, maybe it's not as exciting. That's right. not. That is exciting. But it's, practical. it's not exciting, but it's practical. But my Buick is missing the knobs on the radio, and I want to print but new here's knobs. The thing. Those knobs will probably break. They'll break. Yeah, once you use them. And you want to know why? Made in the USA, that's why. Because <laughs> they're made right here, and they'll break. Yeah. All right, we've got to take a break. Speaking of breaks. When we come back, more with Peter Ha. Justin has some great stories in the run out today that we must get to. That I would love to hear Peter House thoughts on. Yeah. More 404 oh right after this. We'll see you on the other side of the break with where are you now? Oh, Gizmodo's Peter House. <laughs> be right back. Welcome back to the 404 Show. We're here with Peter Ha of uh, Gizmodo. Gizmondo. Right? Gizmondo? No, not Gizmondo. No? Gizmodo. So your, uh, people should check out your Jawbone Up review that's going live today. Yes. All right, make sure you read that. We'll link that in today's show notes. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of stories here that I want to get to on the second half of the show, including the first one you have here, which I think is very important, and I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts about well, it's not important, but we have to talk about it. But it's the, we haven't had a chance to yet. What's the importance of album track order? Oh, oh, that one. That one. Yeah, this one's not important. That That's a good story. Yes, let's get to that. The importance of album track order mm -hmm. in the digital age. Right. So uh, Spotify and Rhapsody put out a study 
um, sort of analyzing the track order that current artists choose when they uh, put music up on streaming websites. And uh, previously, a and reps kind of thought that it wasn't a big deal anymore, that you know, whatever order you put in, it's fine because people download individual songs rather sure. than albums now anyway. But according to this study by Spotify and Rhapsody, it's kind of more crucial than ever, and it can have a big effect on payouts, but in a different way. Um, they're saying that prior uh, to streaming stuff coming out before the digital age, mm -hmm. uh, artists would kind of wait and put the better songs uh, in later parts of the of the album. In later or in later in the parts front? of the album. Yeah. Later. Um, okay. After track eight. Okay. So that's why a lot of times, uh, track eight's always the best song on the album. I don't know. That's See, something that I've I've, I've noticed. I Everyone has like, their own theory on what yeah, the best. Yeah, I feel like it's is. always either number one, or it's buried in the back. Yeah. It's never like two. Right. Yeah. You know, your your single is never number track two. Right. Depending on the album, yeah. If there's enough like really good singles off it, I always mm -hmm. find that good songs like third maybe and there's another one like towards the back it's always delayed though right? yeah well now i guess it's starting to happen that artists are putting their hit songs at the front and then on top of that also stacking singles together so if they have if they're mm -hmm. a popular artist like justin bieber they release a digital only album they'll put all three singles one two and three in the track listing as opposed to spacing them out or putting them towards the end of the albums see it's interesting because it's not just about the order in terms of what's popular yeah now it is i understand because when you pull up a band on spotify right you're seeing certain tracks at the start and you want maybe people to listen to those tracks first right and that's the, that's the song they're going to gravitate towards inherently they're just mm -hmm. going to go to that regardless but there's something to be said for the composition of an album as a whole sure. as an ar artistic piece of content mm -hmm. um you know, uh, I can't. Nothing's really standing out in the begin uh, at the, off the top of my head. But you know, you wouldn't put. You know, if you're if you're sculpting this one whole, you know, masterpiece that is yeah. that is the album. It should be an opus. It right? should be. It should start. Yeah. It should have certain things. You know, certain songs bleed into others. Mm -hmm. Kind of They're the same. That way. It's the theory behind making mixtapes too. Maybe we should define mixtapes for people that are younger listening. But you know, when you're making a mixtape for someone, friend, romantic, otherwise. Yeah. Uh, you always want to make it so that it's not two fast songs in a row or, yeah. you know, like never the same two artists on the same mix, t mix CD. There's a lot of rules. Right. Um, so it should, you're right, it should be a flow. Well, I mean, uh, friends of mine that, that had real records with real, you know, record companies, they, yeah. they, they said that that process was always, you know, th I mean, maybe it wasn't the it's most. Time. It wasn't the most, the crazy, but it was always taken into heavy consideration. You right. Know, and it's something that, you want to make sure you, you do right. But from a financial sales perspective now, I feel like artists should be more encouraged to put their singles at the front because right. everyone's so impatient. Right. You know, like, not only do they have less time to listen to music, it's always a secondary thing where they're listening mm -hmm. in the background while they're working. Or even then, if they do have time to dedicate, they won't go and play 30-second snippets from right. all 14 tracks on right. the album. They're going to listen to the front four. If those aren't good, then they'll just move on. Right. I mean, and, and, and the evidence is right there in black and white. When you go to a Spotify page and you see the most popular tracks for a certain band, yeah. it's usually tracks one, two, three, four, and five from the, the most recent album. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what people are listening to the most. I remember when the last track was like this experimental track. Mm. Remember? Yeah. yeah. And they were just oh, like, yeah. oh, this is the track we're just going to use synthesizers. Right. Or it was a hidden track. Wait yeah, or like a hidden track. To yeah. Listen to yeah. It. yeah. And like track 14 is 14 minutes long yeah. and, at the, and at the 13 minute mark there's a steel drum solo. Right. For no reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And then a bunch of chanting. Yeah. And, inexplicably. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like that stuff I miss, <laughs> man. There's none of that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Man, what, what kind of music listener are you, Peter? Are you, are you a singles guy? Do you sh hit shuffle on your iPod, or do you like to listen to albums in the order that the artist intended them? Uh, lately, I've been just listening to a lot of albums, just all the way through all as way a whole. Through. Yeah, uh, okay. for artists that I really like. Otherwise, I've just started to use Spotify a little bit more and more yeah. in the last couple of months. Yeah, and you know, some people just put out some really awesome playlists. Yeah, like Immaculate Infatuation. Uh, those guys do a pretty good. Good job. Every month they'll release a new one on the first of the month. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys do you know who those guys? Are? I don't know. No. So they're saying so they... immaculate infatuation. It's actually like a, it's a food blog, but these guys that are running it all work for like record labels. Huh. So they have pretty good taste in music. But anyways, it's a good list. Um, I think NPR just put out their like top 100 songs. That's a cool mm -hmm. thing to do, man. Year. Get your Spotify playlist getting popular and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I like that. I'll start doing that. Do, are you a premium Spotify member? No. 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 I can't, you know, I, I, I still had, pay for Mog, so. For who? Mog. 
Well, I'm not emoji. Familiar. I'm not familiar with that. Emoji. It's a service. Emoji. Yeah. Yeah. And you like <laughs> it? I mean, yeah, I like it. But I the only reason I'm using Spotify is because everyone, anytime anyone shares a playlist online, it's a Spotify, Spotify one. Right. So I don't really have a choice. And that's annoying because even if you don't have a free subscription, you can't listen to those songs. Which is irritating no, to no, me. No, you can. You can. You can. Really? On the desktop. Yeah. You can. I, the desktop every time I play, it always prompts me for my username and password. I can't a- even listen to the song unless I'm signed in. Oh, uh, well, let me know. Maybe, you might have just have to log in. You just have to log in. Well, yeah, I don't you, have a free account. I, that's the thing. I don't even account. want to have to sign up for a free account. Oh, yeah. Get a free account. I guess I should. Get one. Yeah. yeah. Please. I'm still resisting. I'm a SoundCloud guy. Are you? I like SoundCloud. SoundCloud's good, but it's not very portable. Uh, or, that's true. Yeah, you also can't access the tracks offline, which is something correct, crucial unless you to pay Spotify. For it, yeah. Yeah. I love Spotify, man. I'm, well, I'm a big proponent. What about you, Ariel? I mean, you yeah. make music from from a producer's perspective. What's your favorite service to use and to uh, and distribute? To really distribute. Yeah. Um, for full albums, use Bandcamp a lot. Mm. Uh, but really, I've been using SoundCloud a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think SoundCloud's cool, and they, and they just released a new layout, which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that one's yeah. rad. Uh, I like that before, every time you'd scroll through parts of the album in the old SoundCloud, you'd get those annoying comments from users yeah, that are submitting. Yeah, yeah. Now those are on the bottom, so you don't have to see them. Right, right, right. It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a it. weird graffiti wall on this yeah. sound yeah. wave, and you're like, come on now. <laughs> Let's move on with our lives. All right, very cool. That's a kind of interesting topic. Yeah. Because you that, that sort of stuff is just completely out the window with the importance of uh, tracks. Let's get to... Um, let's get to terrible music. Let's get to ter- Speaking of terrible, hey. terrible hey. music. <laughs> Why you you, hey, you don't, like this guy? Don't say that this represents us yeah, as a on. people. Here. No, it, and it's <laughs> more Peter than you, sir. Well, we're not talking about good music here. We're talking about Gangnam Style. What? How do you feel about Gangnam Style? I mean, Wait, say Jeff it. and I never really get a chance to talk about it because he doesn't even know what it is. I do too. It's that. Uh, and you always the, say the, the there's always something that Jeff doesn't know about. Yeah, no, I say there? Gangnam Style. You say Gundam Style. Gundam. No, Gundam is the robots. I know what that is. Okay. But ga- Gangnam. Yeah. yeah. I said it. What what what's your interpretation of all this? I mean, did you grow up listening Gundam. to K-pop, or do you listen to it now? No. How do you? F- is this the minstrel show for the I, Asian generation? I don't listen to any K-pop. Okay. Do you do you are you are you fascinated with this phenomenon that has hit? I mean, the I West? just think it's super hilarious. Yeah. Um, it's an obvious parody, but people a lot of people just don't understand that. Right. right. And I I feel like I like him. As a oh as yeah, a, as a he's, person, he's smart. He seems like a guy that knows what he's doing, yeah. mm-hmm. and is not you know he's he's sort of riding this wave. Out. Oh yeah, he's being incredibly he smart seems, about it. He seems very bright about the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, this guy's been around for a really long time. Yeah. in Korea, and you know now he has a hit that everyone loves because the video is so outrageous. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with the song. It's just the it's just the video. Right. Oh, yeah, the beats I, really just, catchy too. Yeah. Thing, yeah, I think the song. Is is really what got people going though? I mean, yeah. it's it's that that hook that people really dig, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's well, no. Good. I had to do the dance. What you had to? I had to do the dance when you, my brother got married last month or two months ago. You had to. My do sister-in-law dance. Bethany requested that the wedding party like come into the reception oh, to Gangnam Style. That's is she so <laughs> Korean herself? No. She's like six foot tall blonde. Oh, wow. No. So she was like, you guys are doing this. She then your brother was like, the wedding's racist. off. <laughs> she <laughs> sounds racist. Was there a back and forth? Was there a discussion? Or was she like, you are doing this. I am no, Godzilla. No, she's like, you're doing this. Oh, man. No, no, no. I mean, she was just like, we're Please. all going to walk into this song. So you can either learn how to do the horse dance or the lasso thing, or you're going to look really dumb compared to everyone else well yeah that's relative. I think that's relative. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone sort of so how uh, did that go did you have to practice I got really drunk yeah okay. I was yeah, before I was, what you have to do uh the fact that you haven't brought in any documented evidence of this is upsetting I wouldn't either I, I need to I see this I think there's probably some of it somewhere yeah. oh, I don't think Please. it's gonna hit the web no if it ever hits the web I'm going away forever <laughs> yeah I think the problem isn't the video or Sai himself it's yeah. people's response to it like uh yeah. one of my friends was uh, I was with him in a fat in like a McDonald's a couple weeks ago yeah. and there was a guy that went up to us in line a stranger complete stranger never seen him before he's like hey I was talking to my girlfriend about Gangnam Style she had never heard of it before can you guys do the dance <laughs> <laughs> come on yeah like I mean I know how to do it because everyone knows how to do it. it's not a new yeah. dance the it's horse dance is old that hard no to do. it's not that hard if you have any sense of rhythm you could do it but like for him to just think that I have this innate ability to do this thing <laughs> It was embarrassing, yeah. you know, and then it had to be like, nah, man, like, I'm good. I don't even know who that is. You know, like, just trying to fake it. 
like things like that or um you know like glee doing the gangnam style like parody thing it was really painful wait who glee the tv show oh. yeah they recently did that or people that try to put it on at karaoke bars too and then have no idea what to say when the korean characters come up on the screen right just weird stuff like that kind of disturbs me. It's oh, just, get over it's it. More, what are you, what are you, come on. It's more what about the minstrel you? show. It's just a, more about the dance. And, it's yeah, all about the, the dance, right. man. It's yeah, all... I remember at your Halloween party, uh, one of your friends was dressed up as Sai from the video. You remember that? She had the tuxedo on. It was like oh, the sparkly right, right, tuxedo right, yeah, so and everything. Right. Was she being racist? And I remember for yeah. a second, being racist she kept going like, she? oh. She kept I remember for a second thinking <laughs> like, oh, should I, am I, like, should I be weirded out by this? No, because he's Korean and you're right. Chinese. No, I mean, that's not the point. The Asian <laughs> thing is, is what I'm talking about. We can't, we're, we're not going to get the semantics I think, I think if she had like taped her eyes oh, closed yeah, or something yeah, like that, dude, then yeah, that would have been offensive. offensive. But I mean, you know, she had like the black hair up and I was like, okay, clearly this is not racist or offensive at all. Yeah. But it's like, you know, he's a character it's pretty much like dressing up like lady gaga his race really has a hundred percent yeah i know hundred yeah. percent but it made me think she wasn't think. wearing oh dude come on no i'm not yeah. i'm no, not i know i know i know she's being racist she's just being you a just have <laughs> racist <friends. laughs> white racism. i'm just saying i'm never going to another one of your parties fair again. enough <laughs> whatever you guys do just don't google or look on youtube for spartan high school oh. okay so now you're what you're t asking us to do that i actually it's want you to watch it's it. so incredibly bad yeah all right, I'll Even check it if out. you just watch the f first five to what, ten seconds, what is it? Say it again. It's Spartan High School. Spartan High Gangnam School style. Yeah, Gangnam just look style that up. Parody. Okay. Well, we're not gonna watch it on the show. Just okay. imagine thirteen-year-old white girls in middle school dancing is it, is to it, Gangnam Style, but substituting a, the lyrics yes. for their own high school like alma mater so it's like song. A, so it's like an R slash cringe sort of. Yeah. Thing. Oh, it's, it's the top of R slash yeah. cringe. Awesome. Yeah. We were talking about cringe the other night. The reason we bring this up, it's mm -hmm. not like it's you know brand uh, new news here. This this thing's been going on for a while. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> he hasn't made as much money as maybe you thought. Right. Well, he's made a lot of money, but uh, but, but to the average person, the, the, the average yeah. right, and of course, and the, and that's <clears throat> arguably more powerful than dollars and cents. Right. But you know, everyone knows who this guy is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's inherent value there. Right. But in terms of actual dollar amount. Putting a price tag on what he's done, mm -hmm. it's not as much money as you think. Tell yeah. us about it. How much money has he really taken in from this? Well, I, I guess everyone's just been waiting to see when this would finally drop off, but it hasn't. So Associated Press just put out uh, some figures on how much money they think that he's made, mm -hmm. um, just based on his YouTube figures. So the videos had about 888 million views that so far. That's growing. Is so yeah. crazy. So is he going to hit, right hit a billion? I Definitely. hope he gets a billion. He's going to he'll, get he'll a billion. A billion. Really is there, has anyone does. done a billion yet? No. no. He's no. already the highest at 888 Ever. million. Ever. Yeah. Good. So uh, AP says that he's made about $7.9 million off this video and the song so far. Worldwide. Worldwide. But okay. only, get this figure, $61,000 he's, he's made off of download streams and CDs bought in Korea alone that's that's nothing. it but he has a lot of endorsement deals right korea. right that's fine he, i noticed i'm sure that, he's like, like the lebron james of of south korea yeah right? he endorses like, like, noodles i'm right? pretty yeah, sure yeah. yeah i've seen him in a couple commercials yeah but he's only made sixty one thousand dollars and so off. okay here's the figures let me read some stuff off to you mm -hmm. off digital sales only uh it's been downloaded 3.6 million times streamed 40 million times but he only gets 15 percent for downloads mm -hmm. and 7.5 percent for streaming and that's before his and our reps get the money that's before the songwriters get the money the right. video directors everyone that came together to make his music so it's really not that much so that, what was that figure 7.9 million or whatever what? uh which which figure 7.5 percent for streaming songs? No, no no the first no uh, he very, gets very first 15 percent for downloads uh so far he's made 61,000. no but how much did he make off the video um, off the video. You said worldwide. You said something. Oh, like yeah, seven point nine million dollars this year alone. Okay, so that's okay. The Just video came off out. of what? Off of the everything, everything, all included. Oh, in total. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's a good payday. Yeah, that's nice. That's not. But it's still. It's good, lot, but it's, it's still not lower like, than I thought it would be. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But that's because I guess in Korea there's a there exists a website a lot like Spotify where mm. people would rather stream than download. Yeah. So that's why the numbers are so skewed in the streaming. So so here's what he did off of YouTube revenue mm -hmm. because YouTube yeah, now shares know. revenue with right. uh, people who upload. Estimated total rev, uh, YouTube revenue received by Team Psy mm -hmm. is only 1.7 million dollars. Right. Now I say only because it's all, it's approaching a billion views. Well, right. that's because YouTube also takes half of that, right? Right. But he, I didn't realize this. He also makes a portion of the money off of all parody videos too. So if that Spartan Gangnam style oh, really? makes money from YouTube rev share, he gets a part of that. He gets a cut. Uh, he gets... I was wondering about that. 
You know, it's funny. If you look in the App Store for iOS, and I don't know about Android, but there's so many, like, Gangnam Style apps. Yeah. For sure. And I'm like, how does there's he... A, there's like a Gundam app? style whack-a-mole app. What would yeah, app do? do? Like a, it's oh, like a game. Oh, there's one last night that I saw that I think is like the number one or number two uh-huh. most downloaded in the free section. But literally, it just puts a photo of your face on him, yep. on his body, doing that. the dance. Yeah, I've seen that. What? Jib-Jab does it. Yeah. Jib-Jab oh, really? does it, too. Yep. This can't be a paid app. No, and Jib-Jab... No, it's free, but still, it's like... Jib-Jab has to, has to license out all that. <laughs> They're legit. Like, they why doesn't he have this thing, up. like, trademarked and all these things yeah. so people uh-huh. can't do that? Yeah. I don't know. Wow, weird. that's crazy. It's weird. It's uh, weird. Uh, all right, we've got time for maybe one or two more headlines. We uh, we started a little late today. I want to get to uh, two things. I want to talk about Pizza Hut. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about uh, this new Verizon uh, DVR patent that they yeah. filed. Okay. So let's start with the Pizza Hut thing. Um, this is, this is what did you say like top two for you pizza places? Probably, yeah. Probably this top. maybe Domino's. A toss up. <laughs> it's a toss up. Toss up. Yeah. It's, it's Best a toss-up. pizza places ever. What? Well, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know. It's not I know. a joke. That's the scariest part. And that was the most genuine reaction to such a thing being yeah. said. Are you serious? He's yeah, seven ser- by seven by he seven. He is deal. as Trip serious seven. as anyone could be about anything. Where else can you get three large pizzas with unlimited toppings for twenty one dollars? Wait, are you delivery? Are you, are you not, being serious? That pizza messing, and Domino's look, are your favorite look, pizza places. He is not. Do I look like around. a man that's joking? No, I'm. I'm completely serious. My favorite <laughs> Pete, pizza places. Peter. If I had to choose between Pizza Hut and Lombardi's, Peter. I'd choose the latter. Peter. No, Lombardi's isn't good. No, Lombardi's is good. But no, it's, it's not. But not it's pizza better than good. Domino's. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. Pizza Hut has the best crust of any manufacturer. What? Yep. This is. This are is you, is you out of your mind? This is real life. This is what I'm dealing with on a daily basis. It's I'm gonna okay. let you talk about whatever we were gonna talk about, but then no, I'm we gonna, can talk about then, it. No, no. I, when was the last time you had Pizza Hut? And what is your favorite pizza place? I think in the New last York? time I had Pizza Hut was when I was in like Ithaca, New York, visiting my brother when he was in college yeah. back in the '90s. Yeah, because yeah. it's insanity. I have a lot of good memories of Pizza Hut, man. I remember when I was growing up, they used to have the Pizza Hut buffet. Look, if you, and my mom if would you, take me, we'd have like the dessert pizza with cinnamon and graham if you crackers. Said, like, on round table so pizza, then maybe I'd be like, all right, yeah, that was pretty good. No freak round table. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's not human. I'm not joking about this. Domino's is really good. Pizza Hut may be better. That crust. I want you to go to Posto that... on 18th mm-hmm. and 2nd Avenue. Yeah. Been there. Oh, like dude. No, you there. don't. Dude, he's, <laughs> have not. he's had, he's kidding, had it all. Like, I've had a lot I'm of I'm even pizza. trying to get him to do like more generic like chains, like like a two boots or something like that, oh, which I've is been not two great. Boots. It's not fantastic. What about Papa John's? Oh, Papa John's is trash. Ooh. Take away that butter it sauce, trash. it's trash. It is, I mean, Papa John's I'm, I'm is just trying it out there. I'm not advocating yeah, okay. pizza or <laughs> no, Papa John's. No, I mean, John's, we, we live but... pretty close to each other, so I'm sure we've been to all the same pizza places. East Village Pizza and Kebab is good. That's like, dude, that. No. Yeah, there's a lot of good pizza places <laughs> oh, around. East Village Pizza and Kebab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been there before? New York Magazine's number one pizza in the East Village. Wow. Justin, the point is, ever. there's no hope for you. But the <laughs> reason we, you are. He, he has <laughs> a man. You live in New York and I you're know, on a pizza I know. hut. I get crap Is there even everybody. a pizza hut here? Yeah, there it's is. It's like going to Maine and going to Red Lobster. I know, I know. That's what it's like doing. But you know what? It's it might good. actually be you don't think it'd be good up there? No, dude, I don't. Okay. I don't think. I, I'm just asking. I think you'd go. I think you'd want to catch your own lobster. Yeah. You know, because okay. there's such a surplus of lobsters up there. <laughs> Did you know that Domino's has an online pizza tracker and a yeah. separate app that lets you look at you know and communicate yes. with you the know, person that's making your pizza? You can't communicate. You, can, you awesome. can cheer him no, on. No, you can. You can you comment on on you the way che- that he's making. You can, hey, bro. You can no. <laughs> give you me can a couple cheer- more slices of pepperoni. Did you want to know why? me out on Because our buddy Zach. I just saw you sneeze on that, bro. <laughs> our buddy, our buddy Zach, who's yeah. on our show every now and then, mm-hmm. he is uh, obsessed with Dominoes as well. And when he comes on the for a holiday did? episode, yeah. you guys can both geek out about Dominoes. I love Zach. And I watched him communicate with the pe- with the. Can we have a delay. pizza specific episode sometime this month? It's not a bad idea. It's, I mean, I will come back. It might end in a fight, though. Apparently, no, no, I want you to go. Yeah. I want you to go try Posto in a couple other places. Okay. We'll have this. Right. Maybe, why don't you bring it in and we'll have it. We'll okay. Leave. Well, okay, yeah, I'm right. cool with that. Fine. I'll have a pizza maybe, delivered to the office. We could do it early next week, okay. maybe. You'd be down. Yeah. All right, we'll we'll do that. The reason we brought up Pizza Hut is not because of their terrible pizza. It's because of something. Is this is this real, dude? This is real. Explain. Uh, so this is just a testament to uh, Facebook engagement. Um, pizza Hut and its digital ad agency. What are they called? A- uh, Grip Limited. Kind of came up with this idea last year and floated it on their Facebook fan page. 
You just don't want to hear about anything no, pizza hut related. Keep going, okay. keep going. On their Facebook so fan on the, page on their made Facebook... up of Justin Yu. Yeah, they, from they, 300 <laughs> profiles created by me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have multiple fake profiles you online. Do, just to get them just to do to love, yeah. what they just did. Exactly. That's dedication. Um, so last year they put this joke up on their page uh, saying, hey, we're going to create a pizza hut pizza flavored perfume. Scented. Pizza scented. You don't want to be drinking this. You perfume. can do both. Oh, you can. No, okay. no. Okay, so, fine. Scented perfume, yeah, right? right? Yeah. And uh, of course, it was a joke, but they got so many responses, positive responses from people like me, <laughs> that they decided to actually make it. And pretty soon, a hundred of those fans that liked the post originally on Facebook are will be getting their own bottle of pizza flavored perfume. Which means you, the odds of you receiving one. Are pretty, pretty damn good. Very high. Pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah. Only 100 people get it? Only 100. It's very limited. They're saying that it's going to smell a little bit like dough, but with uh, Pizza Hut exclusive seasonings. <laughs> oh, my God. What is exclusive to Pizza Hut? I don't know. It's a mystery. I mean, I wouldn't give away my secrets if Look, I Look, they can't. They, can't they don't have a secret. There's nothing good about their pizza. There's, There's a, a secret, secret. Coca-Cola the crust, recipe. The crust <laughs> isn't. You don't like that? What? Yeah, I'm serious. That spongy crust, it's so good. Anything, any kind okay, of sauce wait, hold you put on. onto let's it. Back it immediately. Yeah, let's back Do you back like a more doughy crust? I like both. As opposed to what, like a thin crust? Like a thin crust. I like both, but yeah, I guess I would prefer a thicker than Thicker? Thin. Yeah. What about you? I can go either way. I love pizza of all kinds. I like I like thick. Thick crust. Thick crust. I can, you know, if I had a chance, I go thin. I go thin. I like thin. Yeah, I like thin. Mm. I, I don't prefer thin. A lot of places in New York are thin. Yeah. 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 Have you like, had Domino's Meat Lovers Pizza? <laughs> 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 He's trying to get you, man. He's <laughs> Have you to had get it you. before? Domino's. It's no, good. it's no, really, really you're, good. You're such Dude, an even when they I was in Cajun college, oh. I would order from like the local places and yeah. not the chain. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll support very few food chains, but Pizza and Domino's are two of them. Yeah. Also, what were you doing in McDonald's the other week? Oh, I mean, it was Wednesday. It was just my normal. It was another Wednesday. Just doing my normal, man. <laughs> Come on, Peter. It's my thing. Yeah, you, you don't eat McDonald's. Don't get all high and mighty I about McDonald's eat, right now. I don't eat any. You I put one eat, Fitbit like, bracelet food. on, you think you're better than me because you don't <laughs> eat McDonald's. Get out of here. No, what do you normally eat at McDonald's? <laughs> um, what don't I eat at McDonald's? Three they have a whole fillets. new menu. No, I usually get the classic Big Mac. Yeah, or two cheeseburger menu. Oh, okay. he's, got, he's got problems, bro. Yeah. He's got problems. You look good for eating. <laughs> I guess I can't. I mean, I should pizza. eat it while I can, while I have this beautifully fast metabolism, because I'm not going to be able to do it. I know that. I think your metabolism's too fast. Yeah. To Something's be totally gonna honest with you. In the future. Finally, before we say goodbye for the day, Verizon has patented DVR technology that is going to detect activity in your living room. The purpose of this? To feed you specifically targeted ads. Because now that everyone uses their DVR to fast forward through commercials... That ain't going to be around forever. I hope you guys, we all realize this, right? Mm -hmm. The luxury of just fast-forwarding commercials, that's not going right. to be around forever. There will be something. How are they going to be tracking you now? With a camera. That's right. Verizon filed the patent with a camera inserted inside of a DVR. <laughs> it would home in on ambient action by viewers, including, I crap you not, including cuddling, fighting, participating in a game or sporting event, and even talking. What? For example. No one's going to. For example, if a user is watching a television program, a traditional targeted advertising system fails to account for what the user is doing. For example, eating or interacting with a user, or sleeping, or maybe touching themselves while the user is what? watching the program. This is going to limit the effectiveness, personalization, and or adaptability of targeted advertising. This is, uh, this is something brand new. Don't, be, don't forget, though. Millions of Connect users have invited a camera to be looking at them at all times. What? So this is Connect. Yeah. Wait, explain that. Microsoft I mean, I know what Connect is, but is there? It's always on. It's, it's always, always on. on. If watching? your Xbox is on, it's looking at you. It's not necessarily watching what you do, but it is looking at you in your right. body motion. But they're not using the images for, to sell you things. They say no. But okay. I'm sure. Who is going to opt in? Might not be. A, to this. Might have a choice, man. Might have a choice. Hmm. Whatever. I'll just cover it up with tape. That's, that's is that what you do like, with your Connect too? I no, would definitely no, I, do that when connect, I'm at home. My Connect is faced uh, when I don't use it. It's faced towards the back. So. Right? Is there a microphone on that thing? There is. Yeah. That's terrifying. It's, I mean, can, aren't scary. you imagining a guy in a room somewhere with just a wall full of TVs can bring up anyone who has a Connect? Yeah, he's just like real sweaty, eating a bag of chips. Yeah, just, yeah. In a like wife a, beater like and a type of guy. Yeah, I should stop yeah. touching myself in front of my Connect. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, hey, look, what you do in your own house is your own prerogative. Right. That's the thing. If you want to touch yourself, touch yourself. Go crazy.
go go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's touching himself right now. Well, he, should. <laughs> well, he should. We're all excited. But that's uh, that's an interesting story. But make sure you go so to uh, cnet.com slash the 404. We'll put that link up in the show notes along with links where to find Peter Ha on the internet. You can start by following him on Twitter. What's that? The, the Pe- Peter Ha. The Peter Ha. Correct. Correct. Always love Correct. his... His like four word comments on Twitter. Very... This thing sucks. <laughs> Something like that. Suck. I love it. Well, you and I, you and I have a lot in common. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you for being on the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. We'll try and work in a pizza thing. If yes. not, you'll come out and visit us at CES on the stage. Absolutely. Sounds like a plan, everybody. That will help us get through the show. Mm-hmm. I know it will. Always having you is a uh, is a lot of fun. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Eight six six four zero four CNET is the number to call. You can email us to four zero four at CNET dot com. Hit us up on Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Quick programming note, uh, tomorrow uh, we will have a show, and then no show Friday. Mm -hmm. We're going to take Friday off, and then finish up the last five shows of 2012 for the 404, starting next week. We'll have a show every day next week, and then we're done. Mm -hmm. You'll get five Yuletide episodes, and then we're back January 2nd or 3rd? 3rd, Wednesday. Is that a Wednesday? I believe so. Whatever it is. That's when we're back. We'll let you know for sure before we say goodbye. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. Oh, and I'm Peter Hunt. You are, man. You still are. are. It's the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. Have a great Wednesday, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.